<coughs> oh, hey there. What are you, uh, what are you doing here? Just, uh, just playing guitar in London, hanging out. Do you want to check, check my stuff out? See what's up? <laughs> Lovely folks at Gibson let me this guitar for tour, and it sounds wonderful. Uh, funny story about this is they actually, I don't think they know it, but they lent me the same exact guitar for Fox and the Law's first tour, and that dawned on me when I got there and was signing the slip for it. But this is just a standard SG that just absolutely rips and stays in tune the entire show. It sounds fantastic. I actually usually play Fenders, so that's why. Gibson got involved and said, what the hell are you doing? So uh, <laughs> I've been playing Gibson lately. So I have like a, like a knockoff Fender Jazzcaster at home that I use for a lot of recording, but I also play with uh, Les Pauls and 335s and just, it depends on what I want to do in the studio. And then when I'm touring, I always, always play Gibsons and, you know, especially SGs are just really light and they're easy to transport and they stay in tune really well. And this one in particular just has a great tone for what I do. It's very, very dark kind of tone for it. It goes great with the reverb we use. So the amp came uh, when I was picking up um, these guitars from Gibson. David, who runs the London showroom, recommended that we head down to Denmark Street since we didn't have an amp slot for a tour and just take a look at stuff over there. So I went to a used a vintage store and I checked out this little PV here and it's literally 59 pounds and, um, and I had 60 in my pocket so I got a pound change for it and it's just got great tone. Just really good snap to it and the reverb channel is a nice touch plus it has a tube preamp which helps since it's totally a transistor amp. Solid state's not really my thing usually. I like something that, that has a good amount of bass in it, since it were a three piece and we really want a full sound. So I need something with like a very rounded tone, you know, it can still have snap to it, but I tend to use uh, Fender bass in or twin reverb amps when we're touring. And, um, and so this is kind of a good knockoff for like a beginner, you know. I'll probably unload it after this trip for more than 60 pounds. <laughs> Make a little tight, nice, tidy little profit. Just the price, the size, and I'm like, oh, it's got reverb. Oh, the tone's not bad. Oh, shit. So, this first pedal is my tremolo. And I use this on almost every song at some point. I mean, I think this is probably my favorite pedal to have just for that nice, like. It's perfect for texture in a lot of songs, and it gives us kind of more of a soulful feel. You can change the shape of it and stuff, and speed it up really great. And it's just really nice for texture when we're playing a lot of our songs, so I keep it kind of softer on here. This one I just found at the store. You know, I've been using this for probably, this is probably the one I've owned the longest of all my pedals, and it's just an essential for everything I do musically. It sounds great for rhythm guitar playing and giving it a lot of soul. It really goes well with the delay that appears everywhere. <laughs> The delay is great for slapback. A few of these our producer Greg Markle gifted us, and I really love this delay to give a lot of slapback and make solos kind of pop and give some of the really sharp chords a little, you know, energy. song we play funny little colors we use this phaser on it this is another one Greg gave me and it's pretty much exclusively used on funny little colors I mean but it's so perfect for that song 
that I absolutely, it's like a must for this setup for that. <laughs> Then you can hear them all together. Or a song like Twisted is one like this is a flanger that I love to put in a ton of bar. Just to make things sound fucking weird. Two are cheapy little pedals that I definitely use this just for a lot of color on the guitar, and this is a chorus pedal, so this stays on a lot during probably 80% of our songs, and it just gives it that. Purchase for really cheap, like on Amazon or something like that. I just needed them in a pinch. We use different stuff in the studio, but these travel well. And then this last guy, Greg made himself. Uh, Greg has this company called Recovery Effects that does um, all sorts of crazy pedals. Yeah, shout out to my homie. Uh, I broke the knob off. Greg, can you fix that? He gifted this to us when I was in the studio with Fox and the Law, and this thing is fantastic because I use it mostly just for solos, so when you hear. But it sounds, it has a really cool bass, like low end bass. So it's a great buzz pedal and you know, clean it. That was probably too loud for the neighbors. I think I'm blending a lot of, uh, Things I learned playing soul music in R&B with things that are basic, you know, blues and, and rock bits. I, you know, I grew up on a lot of like classic surf and reggae records and things like that. And as I got older, I got more into rock music. And so I've started combining a lot of those elements for this band. And so, I mean, just there's certain riffs that I don't hear a lot of people play stuff like that, you know, so like a... Set up for this tour. It's really basic. I mean, I got a gifted guitar, a secondhand amp, and a bunch of goofy ass pedals I'm taking around, and people seem to dig it. All right, FPD, you've seen my rig. Now get the hell out of here! <laughs>